Hello, it's Wednesday, and it's on time this week. This week, I have been mostly painting Goliaths. Where have they gone? Here they are. So if you follow my Instagram, you'll have seen pictures of these. These are two of the test models to varying stages of doneness. Um, this guy I was testing out whether or not I should dry brush these black bits on the back, or if I should edge highlight them. And I came down on dry brushing at first, but now I'm like, hmm, probably still dry brushing. And this guy was testing different ways of doing the pants. Now, during the course of this, I'll spice in some footage about here-ish, where I was recording the final guy, and everything was going pretty well. And then I just kind of decided, eh, I really don't like how a lot of this is looking. And so ended up with the guy in the strip, and now he's back to being just primed again. Um, I don't mind doing this because these Goliaths are pretty sturdy models and are unlikely to break. Um, I also stripped this guy at the same time. And put a shoulder pad on him because I found a shoulder pad and I was like, I want to see what the shoulder pads look like. And I quite like them, but they don't fit very well on, most, on a lot of the models. Anyway. So, I basically came to the conclusion that the greaves and the band braces need to be not orange. And the knee pads, and if they have elbow pads, elbow pads. Not all of them have elbow pads. For example, this guy here doesn't have any elbow pads. The guy with the... I can't remember the name of the weapon. The one that fires bolts into things. He doesn't have elbow pads, but a lot of them do have elbow pads. And I decided the elbow pads and the knee pads needed to be a kind of black plastic slash rubber type material. And then the only orange is the pants and the chest plate and the belt, kind of the middle of the model. Better to demonstrate on this guy. Orange, orange, orange. But weathered up the metal areas so that you can see the metal underneath and then get some nylac oxide around the bolts and use that to spot colour. But I kind of, re I really messed up the face. I regret putting the respirators on these guys. I was like, you respirators, yeah, yeah, now I don't have to paint faces. But it actually turns out that on some of them, uh, this guy's not so bad, because it's just a gas mask. But on some of them, this respirator in particular, I have no idea what this is supposed to be. Looked at the heavy metal paint job, it doesn't make any sense. I think it's a pretty specific Bane reference from the Dark Knight, or whatever. No, not the Dark Knight. That's the good one. The one with Bane in. That movie that Nolan made. That, you know, all the people do impressions of really badly. I'm really annoyed by Bane impressions. Um, yeah, this seems to be a Bane reference. Although my head it's kind of looks a bit more like Rictus from... Mad Max Fury Road, the best movie of all time. And I was painting and I was like, this looks wrong. All of it looks wrong. Everything about it looks wrong. So I'm not really sure how to paint that. And he may not end up being the model. I, mean, I may end up doing this guy on the thing and just say, hey, don't put respirators on your guys because it looks stupid. And it does. Um, respirators don't look like faces. And the human eye and brain is conditioned to look for faces as a focal point, so something to look at. So when you've got a model with a face, your eye is naturally drawn towards it. If your face doesn't look like a face anymore, your brain kind of rejects it a little bit. So, you know, if they've got respirators, just put them on their belt. That's just a respirator face that I just put, I just glued to his belt, right there. And, uh, yeah. I think they look better without the respirators and with actual faces and go to the effort of painting the faces and their eyes are so small and so squinty that you don't have to paint them. So that's the state of this and it's just, these are pretty much all I've painted this week. Um, so I'm going to talk about some other things that aren't what I painted this week. Although I painted the metallic bits on these tanks and then gave it a matte coat ready for 
the washable white paint for the white wash on these because I really need to get these done because I need the money. And I hope the person that wants to buy this army is still interested. I haven't contacted them in a while because I haven't done anything on it for quite a while. That's the first thing I've done in weeks. So that, those are the only things I've painted this week. I've done no progress on the Dreadnought. Um, but I was editing Spike Claw Swarm, which is an hour-long video for those that are waiting for it. It's a very, very long video. And I was like, oh, God, why is it so long? So I've got other things. Um, I've been building stuff. I've been going through my massive bits box, um, which it turns out is mostly full of Space Wolf bits. Because oh, I've got some over here. My painting table is a mess. It's full of half-finished products. Wolfguard, anyone? I've got an entire Space Wolves army down in this drawer down here. Only infantry, though. Got no vehicles for it. Um, that's from not the last time a Space Wolves Codex came out, the time before that. Or was it the last time? Whenever that big flyer came out that looks like a dog's head, when that came out, I bought a Space Wolf army. Didn't buy any of the new models. <laughs> Um, no, wait, it goes all the way back to when the Space the space Wolves versus Space Wolves versus Orcs, the Red Warg, was it, or something? That box set came out. I picked up loads of cheap Space Wolves off my friends, and I was like, I'm going to start Space Wolf Army. And I started it, and they're all airbrush base coated. None of them are finished. I painted Bran, Red, Bran Redmore, who's got a showcase video on his channel. It's, it's for sale on eBay right now if you want to pick him up. Um... Yeah, I finished him, and then I never painted any more Space Wolves after that. And I've got an entire army of Space Wolves that I'm probably never going to finish. Because I don't like painting trim, it turns out. I could probably knock them out relatively quickly if I didn't, didn't care about the quality of the paint job. But I always care about the quality of the paint job. Anyway, what we're looking at here is one of my oldest models that I found. It's a metal model. At some point, this staff was bent over, and on bending it back, all the paint came off. This is one of my oldest models. Let's zoom in on it and have a really good look. Let's get it in focus. There's the focus point. This is some kind of Nurgle priest guy. It's a metal model. It's old. It's got a really ugly cloak on it. And I painted this when I got back into the hobby in... Late 2011, so seven years ago, six and a half years ago now. Probably actually only six years ago now, actually thinking about it. No, that would be 2012. <laughs> six and a half years ago. I got back into the hobby, and this was one of the first models I painted. The actual first model I painted was a Vindicare Assassin, but he has since been sold, and I don't have him anymore. And he was better painted than this. But uh, like the week I got back into the hobby, my local Games Workshop store was doing a Battle Force challenge. And if you know what one of those are, you buy a Battle Force, you paint it in a month, and then you play games with it, and someone is declared a winner. It wasn't me. But I got a bunch of Chaos Knights and some Chaos Warriors, and I painted them all really dark green with, an, with my airbrush that I'd just bought at the time. Slapped a Null Oil wash on all of them. Um... And I've spent ages sculpting like tiny little nurgly things on them, which were ugly and not very good. Like boils and stuff. All over them. Sculpted all that on. And then I just airbrushed it dark green. It was... I airbrushed it olive green. From VMA. Did like one highlight with another green that was slightly lighter but not in, not light enough um, slapped a null oil wash on the entire thing dry brushed the chainmail based it and that was it, job done and I knocked out that entire battle force in about three days before the event was due to end, like I assembled them and then just yeah, just knocked them out in about three days and they were ugly they were so bad and i thought they were amazing at the time having just gotten back into the hobby and i was like yeah i've painted an army in three days this is easy 
This is so easy, this hobby. Why isn't everyone's army painted? <laughs> now I know why. Um, but I painted this guy, who I had to mail order at the time. And as you can see, he's basically just like... I did airbrush a zenithal highlight of grey over this guy, but again, this was a really early rookie mistake. It wasn't a light enough grey, I think it was just VMA dark grey blue over black. That was it, that was my highlight. Um, washed it all black again, which basically just turned it black. And the horrible grey colour. Painted the scrolls in and then washed them with Agrax Earthshade. Painted the flesh with Bugman's Glow. And a little bit of Cadian Flesh Tone highlight, I guess, is in there. Washed it with Reichland Flesh Shade, just nuking all of the highlighting that I did, because I slapped it on back then. Not like now when I actually like take care with washes. In fact, I just slapped it on, didn't care, just let it pool and didn't and dry. And up here, this kind of mess of fleshy bone stuff. I actually like tried there, and you can kind of see what I was going for. And I guess you can kind of see a progression from this to my more recent stuff. Yeah, this this so this is my oldest model that I have that I still have. It's not the oldest model that I've ever painted. That would go all the way back to like 1993, I think, when I got into the hobby and started a Skaven army. Um, and I don't even remember what they look like looked like anymore. I don't have pictures of them yet. I didn't have pic didn't have cameras on your phones back then. No photos of any of my models from back then. Um. But I remember playing a lot of Warhammer Quest and a lot of Necromunda. Much more so than actually playing fantasy battle games or 40k. 40k was awful back then. It was really bad. Um, but fantasy was much better. Fantasy was my game. Anyway, off topic. Yeah, so I don't have the oldest model I painted, but I do have this one. And quite frankly, this is a lot worse painted than a lot of the stuff I painted as a teenager back in the 90s. So when I got back into the hobby, I would be very bad. Um, just awfully, awfully bad. And um, I remember my, my local store manager pretending to like my models because that's what they have to do. They have to say that they have to find something about your model that's good and say that they like it, even if you've got the worst paint job in the world. They have to do that. They were quiet because obviously they're not allowed to insult the customer and say, "Hey, your stuff's rubbish." You need to learn to paint. Here, let me teach you. They're not allowed to say that. They have to say, hmm, I like the base. I like the, the maggots. I like what you did here with the skulls and the bones. It's all a lie. They think your model is awful. <laughs> I shouldn't badmouth Games Workshop employees. They're great people. Well, most of them are great people. My Games Workshop employees in my local area are absolutely amazing people. I can understand if you've had bad ones, that you might not like them. Uh, so yes, my oldest model everyone. From that to, hang on, there'll be a jump cut as I get a model. So, 2011, 2018. Yes, that was this year. Oh, how far I've come. <laughs> This might be the thumbnail, in fact. In fact, it probably will be the thumbnail. Yeah, 2011, 2018 over here. I've come a long way in six and a half years, I'd say. Um, I'm not a Golden Demon winner yet. Maybe in 2019. But yeah. So yeah, that's my oldest model. What else have I been up to? Um, oh, I did some experimentation with the old liquid chrome. It didn't take two weeks to cure, as per the internet says. I think that's more for the pens and not if you airbrush it on. But I'd done one test before and it wasn't dry after 24 hours. But this guy had been drying for 48 hours when I messed with him. So, this is a Custodes that I had left over from doing my Adeptus Custodes video, because it turned out I hated painting them. It's too much detail on too small of a space. 
in my opinion. So I sprayed him with the stuff and he just looked like that cheap plastic, cheap metalized plastic that you get, like in a Kinder Surprise toy or something. And I was just like, I was like oh my god, it looks awful. It looks so bad, it's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. And then I let it dry for 48 hours and it was still ugly. Obviously because it was just dry, it wasn't different. And I was like, right, I'm going to slap a non oil wash on it and see what happens. And to be fair, it took it well. It's no longer shiny chrome. It's not remotely shiny chrome anymore. Um, indeed, it's no shinier than just spraying it with metallic paint, like um, silver from VMA. But it looks quite nice. Now, I haven't tested it, but I've got a theory that if you were to use, say, non-oil gloss rather than regular non-oil, you would retain quite a lot of the shine. Not all of it, but you'd retain quite a bit of the metallic shine. So if that's a look you want on your models, then go for it. I will say this, it takes acrylic fine once it's dry. Because um, obviously it's an alcohol-based uh, ink, and it's not going to lift up because you put water on it or acrylics on it, but you've got to make sure it's dry. So, you know, 48 hours to, let's being conservative, let's say a week after you paint it with the chrome, then you can probably touch it again. But definitely paint it on mountain or cork or something, because if you get a fingerprint on it, you can't get rid of it. You've got to strip the whole thing again. And when you've got a one, one to two week cure time, that's not an option. That's a terrible idea. Um, but I will say this, it looks ugly on things like this, but I, my plan was to use it on mechanical things like pistons, rather than actual full models. But I thought it would be funny to try it out on this. And yeah, it doesn't look bad, but it doesn't look great. It just looks metallic. It just looks like I sprayed it with VMA silver and put a normal wash on it. Um, so... Yeah, not worth the extra money for that if you're paying for the chrome mirror-like effect. And there's no point if you uh, lose that as soon as you put anything on it. So yeah, might work with non-oil gloss. Don't quote me, I haven't tested it. Um, you will not get back the shine just by putting a gloss, gloss varnish over this. It's gone. It's just gone forever now. And you can't polish this stuff. If you polish it, you remove it. It's so it's so so shiny that any amount of polishing is only going to dull it. <laughs> so yeah, that was an interesting experiment. I suppose it's been a week of experiments. And oh yes, for those of you who watched last week's epically long update. You may remember me mentioning that I was having um, a nail art stamp kit sent to me from China. Well, it turns out it wasn't actually coming from China. They shipped it from within the UK. Um, although it is a cheap Chinese nail art stamp kit. And it arrived today, and I had a quick try with it. And it's awful. It's a terrible idea. Don't bother with it. So here we go. For those that don't know... How this works and don't want to venture into the bits of YouTube that talk about nail art. I do because it's interesting and the, some of the skills are transferable to miniature painting but a lot of the videos are kind of insufferable just because they're absolutely designed to sell things to teenage girls and it's not enjoyable. It's so overly commercial and manipulative shiny. Uh, you get these metal plates, they come with a protective blue film, like that. They've got patterns laser etched into them, and you take your special nail varnish, which I didn't have any of, you put it over the pattern that you want to copy, you take your scraper, you go a shoomph, but probably shoomph, 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 why isn't it coming off, shoomph, 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 oh my god, it's just going everywhere, shoomph, shoomph. 
to scrape it off so that only the pattern is left with the nail varnish in. Then you get your silicone stamp transferer, which is just very sticky silicone, and you go a loop like that, and then you're left with your pattern on there, and it should have lifted all of the nail polish out of the recesses. Like, it should actually be clean. As you can see, I did not use the correct nail polish on this experiment, and now it's just stuck in there forever. I hit this stuff up with acetone, it ain't coming out. <laughs> But this set was like four bucks for 20 stamps or something, and this thing. So when you go, shoop, and you got your pattern on there. And the idea is you go a plump on your finger. As you can see, I actually tested it on my finger a couple of times. Um, and to die, you've got a nail art pattern going probably from about here on your finger to here. And then you use acetone to clean it up around the edge. And then you put a top coat on it. That's how it works for nails. So I thought, well, why wouldn't this work for acrylic paints? Because I'm not a chemist. <laughs> and it doesn't work for acrylic paints because acrylic paints are too wet and not sticky enough. And it seems like the kind of nail, nail polish you're supposed to use for this stuff is really thick and really sticky. Because what you don't see in the pictures of those fantastic nail art is that the pattern is actually raised up by like half a mil and then you put the top coat on it and it kind of smooths it out a little bit but it's still it will still be raised it'll still visibly be raised and if you run your finger over it you can feel the bump um so i didn't realize that until after trying this out and i put some of the old no that's not right oh fun gray it's knocking about somewhere there it is. I put some of that on there, on this one. And did the scrapey thing. Now, the, my first clue was that the scrapey thing did not work very well at all. It was mostly just kind of pulling the paint out of the pattern and then smearing it over the opposite side. So, first clue that it wasn't going well. But then, you know, I got it kind of clean. Got it onto the stamp. Now, as soon as I transferred it onto the stamp, we had a problem. It was all smeary because it wasn't sticky enough and it had just kind of smushed to the sides of the stamp. And then I transferred it onto my test model. Oh, this is horrible. And you can see what happened. You can kind of see the pattern, kind of. But it's not usable. It's far worse than if I tried to freehand it. <laughs> Just by eye, and my freehand is awful. And so, yeah, I'm like... Schlumpf. And it just spooges everywhere. That's probably not a word I should use. It's, um... It's the best word I can think of. It just... I don't know what the better word for it is. Suggest a better word in the comments for what it did. Kind of squeezed out the sides of the stamp, and it's, it's as it smushed down, it didn't transfer onto the surface. It just got smushed onto the surface, and all of the paint got squeezed between the surface and the rubber stamp, and just went bleh, everywhere. And you can feel the texture of it. It's horrible. So this is a this is a terrible idea. This worst idea of the year so far. No short shortcut to freehand with nail art stamping. I'll tell you that. Nail art stencils, on the other hand, they do work. If you have an airbrush, um, they're little sticky vinyl, vinyl stencils you can put in your nails. They're very small in area. Like they're designed for female fingernails, which are smaller than mine, although I have quite dainty hands. Um, and yeah, you put you put the vinyl stencil over your finger, and then you you apply nail varnish over the top. Or if you're a miniature painter, you take your vinyl stencil, you put it over the leg of your harlequin, and then you airbrush over it, and you have a diamond pattern. And I've used those, and they do work, but they mostly work on very flat surfaces, not curved ones. So they didn't work for my purpose, which was to do diamonds on the harlequin leg. I'm sorry, there's no shortcut to that either. You ju you've just got to paint them. You've just got to learn to paint them. You've just got to mess up a hundred times and then eventually you'll get good at it. Um, but for doing, say, dags on an orc vehicle, great for that. 
And I think you can also just get airbrush dentals from various places online. I can't remember the name of them right now, but there's a place that Fallout Hobbies. I think it's Fallout Hobbies. They sell stencils that have got lots of patterns on. But if you want cheaper ones that are quite that are very small and very dainty, nail art stencils, they're pretty good. This rubbish, don't bother. It's not a waste of money. My girlfriend's gonna use them. But I thought it'd be a fun experiment and uh yeah, I might do an actual video where I show the process and just how badly it works. I've got another set of stencils that I paid like 32p for. They are the ones coming from China. And they've got leopard print and other animal patterns on. And they might work better because they're slightly bigger patterns. And I'll experiment with different paints. Like it might work better with um, enamels, maybe. I don't know, I might work better with a base paint or if I let it dry for a little bit before trying to transfer it. I'll do a little bit more experimentation before I completely write it off. Because it's kind of fun to do these experiments. And who knows, you might come up with something golden. But uh, yeah, current, current thoughts are, it doesn't seem like it's going to work. It seems like it's a terrible idea. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's what I've been up to. These guys I'm going to be painting during times when I'm waiting for compiles in my job. Because um, boring stuff, but I'm integrating Unreal Engine 4.20 420 into my game, and that requires very lengthy compile times. So I've got a bit of extra time in which I can paint on my work days. Um, so I'm going to try and get some of this done. I've got a lot of video footage of doing uh, painting this guy. I recorded everything right up until I went, this is rubbish. And he was, was kind of finished. You could play a game with him. He'd be tournament red, but he'd be ugly. And I wouldn't be happy with him, and I clearly wasn't. Um, yeah, I'm going to be recording this in bits and bats over the week. And that's pretty much it. I picked up some typhus corrosion because I lost my pot. I don't know where it's gone. I wanted to use this in the Skaven, but I couldn't find it. don't know where it went. So I got some more of that. And I bought some Chase by Dice. That's pretty much it. Those are the things I bought this week and all the stuff I painted. So, yes. Six and a half years of progress. This could be you in six and a half years if you're as good as this. If you're as good as this, you're already better than me. Probably by this point. Why are you watching this channel? To laugh at me. To go, haha, his models are awful. Well, I'll have news for you. I also think that. But anyway. That's it. Ramble over. I'm going to go edit this and upload it. So, uh, subscribe. Patreon. Um, Spike Claw Swarm still up. It's going live on YouTube on Sunday? I'll have to check. I think it's Sunday. Or Monday. Soon, this weekend, just at, or just after this weekend. But if you want to see it now, $5 on Patreon gets you early access to all of my videos um, at least a week in advance. Sometimes I do them a bit further in advance if I'm on a roll or if it's like a two-parter. Sometimes I'll do both parts at the same time and I'll stagger the release YouTube. Yes. I'll do that again. Subscribe, Patreon, paint all the models, um, and that's it. Bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.